All right, this is gonna be a feature overview of the uh, newish Superior Wilderness Designs Rugged Big Wild 95. Um, I've only had this thing for a couple weeks. I've taken it on two trips. Yeah, one two day, one night trip, and I guess the other one was just a training hike. So I don't have a ton of experience with this yet, certainly not enough to do a full review, uh, but there's just not a whole lot of information online about these big load haulers from Superior Wilderness Designs. So I figured I'd weigh in, make a short video talking about the features and uh, just letting people see it up close so they can decide if this is gonna be a good pack for them or not. Uh, this guy is 95 liters in size superior wilderness designs says that it'll carry 60 pounds comfortably i haven't gotten to test that i've carried 40 pounds in it and it carried very comfortably with 40 pounds um, it weighs two pounds 10 ounces according to swd um, i put it on my scale and it weighs two pounds 9.9 .9 ounces so it's just right on as far as weight uh, the I have a couple custom features on mine that don't come with the pack unless you add them on. One is this uh, vertical compression strap here that allows you to close the roll top and make it flush with the top of the backpack. Um, another one is I've had the interior seam sealed. Um, and then there's a couple other customizations that I've actually removed from the pack just so I can show it in its stock form or as close to stock as I can get it. Um, so far, I'm super happy with the quality of it. It is a really well-made backpack. Um, but I, I've used it, a, that two-day, one-night trip was a pack rafting trip. Um, so I've carried a, I basically had the thing full and I had about a 35 to 40 pound load depending on how much water I was carrying. Um, so I'll go over the the suspension first. The shoulder straps are thick enough. Uh, they're wide enough. Real simple design, but they are comfortable. There is a uh, sternum strap here. Pretty narrow um, webbing on it. I think that's three-eighths of an inch webbing. Uh, it's adjustable. You can move it up and down and move it through these different loops on the daisy chain webbing here. There's no elastic in the sternum strap. One thing to be aware of is there's no whistle because it's such a, a small uh, piece of webbing. There's no whistle on the sternum strap. Um, then we have some more narrow gauge webbing down here. I believe this is 5 8 inch webbing. Um, the first thing I thought when I saw that there was 5 8 inch webbing was that's too narrow and it's going to slip through. And I tested it and it, it just doesn't slip at all through this buckle. This is a, I've not seen this buckle in use before, but it grabs really well. Um, so I think that's kind of a theme on this backpack is SWD is using smaller gauge webbing on a lot of the stuff than you might see on some, uh, some other backpacks. I've got a porter here and that's got much larger webbing there and much larger webbing on the, uh, the compression straps on the side, and I've got a uh, Seek Outside Uniweep that also has much larger webbing throughout. Um, but I have not really noticed any downside to this smaller webbing. There's a nice little uh, pad here that's very easily removable. This goes up against your back, obviously. Um, it's easy to take out and put back. It's got a pretty cool little system where it's basically just got a flap on the top and on the bottom here um, and this is a stretch mesh I don't know if you even call it mesh it's lycra um, and it holds it in there really well and you can take it out the top or out the bottom I thought when I initially saw this that the pad needed to be taller but it really doesn't it touches exactly on your back where it needs to to uh, protect you from running into the stays here that go all the way up um, it has, uh, I think, 7075 aluminum stays. Apparently, that's a good aluminum. I don't know anything about aluminum, but there are twin stays right there. Um, there's nothing in between the stays. So other than the gear you've got in your pack, there's nothing that keeps the, the stays spread apart, um, which isn't a bad thing. It's pretty easy to stow this inside of a zipper. Uh, 
inside the zippered compartment on a pack raft, which is nice. Um, I think I'll do a second video comparing and contrasting this backpack to the uh, Porter and the Uniweep, which are two other popular pack rafting backpacks. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time on them in this video. I want to focus on on this backpack since there's just not a whole lot of information out there about it. Uh, this thing has a floating hip belt. If we loosen these up, you can see what's behind here. Um, if I if I drop this webbing here, I can actually pull the stay out the bottom. It's a, a pre-bent stay. It's got a nice little curve to it. I haven't needed or wanted to change the curve at all, but if I wanted to, I could. Um, but this is how you remove the stay from, from down here. There's actually uh, this piece of webbing right here, and then there's a buckle that connects the hip belt to this webbing. And there are, looks like one, two, three, four different attachment points on this webbing. So you can actually shorten up your torso length on the backpack by moving this up, up, up. I've got it on the, uh, the longest setting right now, and that's how I'm liking it. So I'm going to keep it there. Um, there's not much to the hip belt. It's really tall. Uh, it's got this swoopy shape to it. Lots of stuff attached to it on the other side. And the, uh, the hip belt is attached to your body via this webbing here. This is, I believe it's three quarter inch webbing. This is some of the biggest webbing on the pack. And it's not even very big. Um, but it, it works really well. So to tighten it up, you just pull one side and it gets tighter like that and you've got a little bit of mechanical advantage but it's not a huge amount and then because there's two pieces of webbing each one is going to pull differently and it's going to wrap that belt around your uh, your waist this hip belt is actually too small for me i ordered the wrong size so i'm going to have to get a different size um, but it still works fine uh, up to the 40 pounds that I had in it anyway. I've got kind of a bony waist and I've noticed this is a one of the more comfortable hip belts that I've ever worn, the way that it wraps. This is one thing I wanted to note. This is a pretty small buckle here. Um, I think it may be too small. I'm sure SWD has tested this, um, so they probably know way more about this than I have, or than I do. But compare it to the buckle on the porter, which is not a massive load hauler. And you can see just the difference in size there. Um, so if there is gonna be any durability issues on this backpack, I'm gonna guess that uh, this hip belt buckle might be one of them. It would be pretty easy though to remove this webbing and route a piece of webbing from this side through here, and you could still tighten it just fine. Kind of like that, it would be really annoying to take off and put on, but you could limp through the rest of your trip if you needed to. Um, I don't think this is going to break on me, but that is like the one part of the pack that I, I would say if anything breaks, it's going to be this, would be my guess. Um, that's about all for the suspension. Oh yeah, we've got load lifters here. These load lifters are done really well. Um, the, the shoulder straps are sewn into the pack. The, the positioning here is not adjustable up or down. <clears throat> uh, the load lifters do attach directly to the top of the stay right there. And they've got these really nice buckles that don't slip as well. And then there's webbing that comes down and this, this is one of the only metal hardware pieces on the pack. But this will slide forward or backward to determine where exactly the load lifters are going to attach to the shoulder strap. I really like that feature. It's nice, you can, you can change it while you're moving. You don't have to take the backpack off. Everything about the, uh, the load lifters seems really well done. Um, and as I used them on the trail, they were really easy to adjust and they effectively brought the, the shoulder straps up off my shoulders enough. 
Uh, there's a nice carry loop here, standard for a backpack, but then there's also an extra one over here. Um, I imagine this would also be useful for maybe uh, lining the pack up when you have to do some climbing without your backpack and you need to pull the pack up behind you. Uh, then there's a single strap over the top of the backpack. Uh, nothing special about that. Because it's one strap, it is also the larger three-quarter inch webbing. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about, well, let's talk about side pockets. They're big, very big. Um, so this is a one liter, this is a one and a half liter Nalgene, and they just disappear in these side pockets. Um, they, the pockets are gusseted and they're three-dimensional in a really nice way. I'm a huge fan of these side pockets and they each have a little drain grommet down here. Or not a grommet, just a drain hole down here. Um, they are really, really big. So if you wanted to put, uh, this is a two person double walled tent, the Stratospire 2 and it fits in there with plenty of room to spare. Nice uh, little elastic adjustment point shock cord there. And these side pockets too uh, are adjustable at the front, obviously, so you can loosen them or tighten them with the pack on your back. The attachment is a nice little piece of webbing over here. And then on the other side, it's also webbing and it's exposed, so you can replace that shock cord very easily if you want to. Um, but you can store so much stuff in here. I think on the other side I've got a couple smart water bottles, so that's what it looks like with two smart water bottles in there. Should have no problem putting stuff in those pockets. They're also low enough that they're accessible while, they're easily accessible while the pack is on your back. I had no problems getting into the, the pockets. <clears throat> um, well, we've got it over here. Let's check out, this is the vertical compression strap, which is an add-on and it's sewn in here at the bottom. And you can actually remove this strap if you don't want to use it. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that, but it's, it's easily removable except for that one piece of webbing that's sewn on and you never really see it down there. So uh, this is also made so that this side is female and the other side is male. So if you don't want to use the side compression straps, you can attach the top to itself. I should really give you a look at the shape. This is an unusually shaped pack. Uh, the bottom is really narrow and it goes up to the top which gets pretty big and then it's the same way in this aspect you got a a pretty narrow bottom and then it just gets bigger and bigger on top i think that's pretty good for a load hauler it's a very advanced shape and it keeps the center of the gravity not too low in the backpack which is going to keep you from leaning forward too far and it's going to keep your back muscles from aching after a day on the trail. Um, <clears throat> so compression strap wise, this is one thing I really like about this backpack is the compression straps. Um, I actually ordered a couple extra just so I could play around with different ways of attaching them and each compression strap has an attachment point and another attachment point and each compression strap can be loosened or tightened from both sides. Um, and there are attachment points on the backpack everywhere. Here, 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 here. I don't think there's a... Oh, there's one down here on the outside of the pocket. Here, 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 here. And if you don't like these guys, there's one on the inside. And I guess there's not a, there's not a lower one on the inside. But these things are great. You can... Uh, loosen them or tighten them from both sides and you can detach and reattach any way you want. You can run them you know in a cross pattern like this, you can run them straight across, um, you can take them off, you can put them on. Uh, one thing to know is the stock straps are not long enough to go all the way around the backpack. So 
it might be useful let's say to run one all the way around to the other side you could easily do that by just putting your own um, 5 8 inch webbing in here so you could have a really long strap if you wanted that goes all the way around you could also change the colors of the straps if you want um, these are pretty easy to put on and take off to demonstrate that here so it comes off that easy and it gets put back on um, if there is no tension on these they can fall off but the way that they're made is they're inverted so this one this one might fall off but this one won't because the opening's at the bottom so there should always be one that remains on there and if you just keep a little bit of tension on it they're not going to fall off at all um, i have had one side fall off on me on the trail because i didn't have any tension on it um, this these three quarter inch straps will also attach to the same uh, the same points as these uh, 5 8 inch straps so there's three points here uh, that you can attach to so you can I ordered a Y strap and it attaches here and here rather than here and then there's three points over here and three more facing down although it doesn't really matter which way they're facing you could attach here and go up if you wanted and then there's six more points here and got a point here and then there's two points on the bottom here so you could actually run straps on the bottom up to here if you wanted so i'm a big fan of this compression it's really lightweight it's uh you can change it on the trail you can shift it around move it set it up however you want um, there is no front pocket on this backpack. Uh, SWD does sell <clears throat> a detachable front pocket if you really want one. Um, but you could also, you know, set up kind of an X pattern here if you wanted to strap stuff here. Um, yeah, there's just so many different ways that you could do things with the compression on this backpack. I'm a big fan of it. To finish out, I'll show you the inside of the backpack. The uh, mouth is huge, just really big. I've got it packed with pillows right now. Um, there are two, there's a plastic stiffener in each side and these stiffeners are removable if you don't want them. Um, I immediately removed them to try to lighten up the backpack and then regretted it because they're just so nice when you close the pack. It's way better than the closure on um, actually either of those packs. Uh, it's just they made up really nice and then clip in like this and it's really fast um, I should mention this because this is the rugged version it's made of ultra 400 it does feel like really durable stuff but I think one area that's gonna get some abrasion is probably up here where the uh, that plastic is as I scrape by try to scrape underneath of trees that's probably gonna get some abrasion on it so I'll have to watch out and see how well that ultra 400 holds up when there's a an abrasive piece of plastic right underneath of it on the inside of the backpack it's really simple there's basically nothing um, I ordered my pack seam sealed or seam, seam taped <clears throat> and they did looks like they did a really good job of seam taping this tape has I don't know how well you can see there it has like ripstop threads in it that's cool um, yeah but they did a really thorough job and this thing again it's massive um, I could definitely stand in here and it would come up over my belly button there's a ton of room in here. I was able to fit uh, a Wolverine pack raft and uh, a dry suit and a PFD and my paddles and all of my camping gear and food for two days entirely inside of here. And there was a little bit of room to spare as well. 
uh, so it's just got a ton of room. I'm a big fan of the 95 liter version. Again, I can't, I haven't tested the load carrying capability yet, um, but the attention to detail and the quality on this backpack is really good. It's better than, probably better than any pack I've ever owned, and I'm really, really pleased with it. So if you're thinking about buying from SWD, uh, I would definitely pull the trigger on that. They've got quite a wait time. I think I waited, mine uh, was 14 weeks, but they had it shipped out to me in 12, so that was nice. Um, but it was definitely worth the wait.